How's it going YouTube? Right, today we've got another one of those Android AI boxes to look at. Uh, this particular one is by Carlink Kit. Uh, this is the T-Box Ambient. If anybody doesn't know what these are, is like a little dongle. This particular one uh, runs on Android 13. It's got its own operating system. And these plug into your car, which has already got CarPlay or Android Auto, the wired version, uh, already activated on your car. What these do is these give you wireless Android Auto or wireless CarPlay, plus the functionality of having an Android system as well. This particular one has, has got a feature on it that has actually stopped me using CarPlay recently as well. It's the first one in a few years that actually does something that's good enough, I think, to stop me from using CarPlay. I've been using this one now for about two weeks and I've not actually used CarPlay in that time. I've put it back in the box just so we can make this video. So let's get down onto the bench, take it out and let's see what you get. Right, this is as it comes in the box. This is the CarLink kit. Uh, T-Box Ambient. This is a full Android AI box uh, running on Android 13. Quick specs, we've got 4GB of RAM, 64GB uh, ROM. We're running on the Qualcomm SDM660 processor and this is the 4G version. Uh, so if we open up the box and see what we get inside, first thing we notice is the unit itself. We'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, down below, we've got a USB-C to USB-A cable to power it, a uh, USB-C to USB-C cable for if you've got uh, more of a modern car, your usual user manual showing you how to use some of the features. Uh, down in the bottom here, we've got one of those little keys. Uh, the reason why we've got this on the unit itself, uh, if we look on the port side of it, uh, we've got two little trays. Uh, with the hole for the key to fit in. Uh, one is for the SIM card and one is for an SD card. Uh, in the middle, we've got a USB-C there, which is the power in, and a USB-A, uh, which can be used for keyboards and mice and things like that if you wanted to plug something extra into it. On the bottom, uh, you can see a nice little metal heat sink there. I suppose that'll get warm. And on the top, we've got this little white ring here. This lights up because we've got the ambient light system uh, that you can change some of the colors of the lights and things like that. As you can see by the size of my hand, it's not massive, it's only a small thing. So it can be tucked away somewhere and it, it looks all right anyway. If I take this key and pop out the SIM card tray, uh, you will notice I am running a SIM card. There is a reason why I'm doing that and we'll have a look at that later and I'll show you why. So that's about all I can show you on the unit itself. I think the best thing we can do now is we can go and plug it in and let's go through some of the features and see what it does. Right, here we are in the vehicle. Uh, this is 2019 Hyundai Tuscan. This is a standard stereo system that we get in the vehicle. Uh, down here, we've got a wireless charging pad and a USB port there. That's normally where we have to plug in for the wired CarPlay. Uh, this has got wired CarPlay built into it. So if we want the functionality of CarPlay, we can, but it is wired and you have to have it plugged in all the time, which becomes annoying because if you join on a little short journey, you don't want to be messing about plugging in down there. Uh, which is why I normally like the wireless systems. Uh, also, the navigation that you get on this, it's got navigation built into it. Uh, but if you want the cameras, but if you want the camera warnings and traffic warnings and things like that, uh, then you have to connect to your phone using a Wi-Fi hotspot, uh, which you can do, obviously. Uh, but also, that means turning on the hotspot every time I get in the car to do that, which is also a bit of a pain. So what we'll do is if we take this car link kit, plug it in down there. Uh, I'll just dump it there for now and what we'll see is we'll see it power up. As it powers up you get the lights turning on and it goes through like a little coloured cycle thing. At that point you can search for it on your Bluetooth on your phone and connect to it and add this to your phone connection. You can see there that the Apple CarPlay is on now. Press the Apple CarPlay. We go straight in there into the application that's the Android 13 for this. So what I'll do is let's set the camera up on a tripod and let's go through some of the functionality of what this can do. A squirrel. Right, I've been playing with this a few weeks, so there's a few bits that have changed since um, it was at its default settings. Uh, one of the things is the navigation, uh, because I'm running on TomTom Tom here. We'll have a look at that in a second. This is an active panel. When I mentioned earlier, there's one thing that this does uh, that's good enough to take me away from Apple CarPlay, and that is this active panel here. As you can see, uh, this is an active navigation panel. You can actually change this to be whatever you want. If we go into settings 
uh, down to navigation setup. Uh, you've got the navigation app setup. I've got TomTom Go. So if we change that to something else, uh, say Waze, uh, you've got the little widget setting as well. You change that. So you can change this to whatever you want it to be. Let's change them both to ways for now. Uh, what that means is when we go back to the home screen, you've got the navigation there, uh, which is now set up as ways. And the little widget here is for the navigation. And that's for your ways as well. Um, I've set everything to dark mode just because I quite like the look of it. Uh, but what you can do with this panel, like I said, is that can be whatever you want it to be. So if we go into the navigation uh, widget settings, uh, we can change that. You can change that to be whatever you want it to be. Say YouTube, for example. And now the active widget is set up to be YouTube, if that's what you want. As I mentioned earlier, um, I've got permanent internet connection onto this because I've got a SIM card in it and I'm running it on 4G. Uh, the other way you can do this is connect to your phone via hotspot and then that will give you the same functionality of this, but I didn't want to be doing that. I wanted it to have permanent internet. So what I did was is I just connected it with a, a SIM card and this setup here is literally good enough so I don't even connect to CarPlay anymore. If we put that back to a navigation, let's go back down to Waze again. You can obviously change it to whatever application you want. Personally, I'd like it left as a navigation. Uh, so you've always got your camera warnings and things like that there as you're driving along. Uh, these widgets here, these are interchangeable. If you just hold one, you can get rid of it and then click plus, add another one to it, and then you can add whatever you want. Say you add the car, you've got the car button there, which obviously takes you back to the original car stereo. Uh, so if I play Apple CarPlay again, we go back to this screen. Uh, up in the top left corner, you've got your Now Playing. Uh, down here, you've got your four uh, shortcut buttons, like I said. Over at this side, you've got your four last used applications. Uh, if we press this Home button here, that takes you in to the apps that we've got installed. We've got a, a few little games as well that I've installed on it. Uh, so if you so wish, you can play games on you on it as well. Uh, up here, you see this little round dot there. That's a little shortcut widget. If you press that, that brings you back to home. Uh, it's got some other bits on it as well, like split screen. Uh, you get back to the car. You can actually you can close apps and things like that from here. So if I clear all, that'll close all the out open apps. But I've got two phones set up on this. One is a Bluetooth phone, uh, which is my iPhone that's connected to it. And then it's got the other phone, which is for the SIM card that I've got installed in the unit itself. Um, I don't actually use that as a phone. I just want that as an internet connection for this stereo. Obviously, because we're on Android, uh, we can go across, we've got the Play Store, and we can install any other apps that we want to install, especially for things like streaming services. So I've got a few set up here. Uh, we've got YouTube, as you could see earlier. If I go to one of my videos, uh, there we are. Well, let me turn it down so you're not hearing me twice. But as you can see, we've got a nice HD quality video coming out of it there. Uh, so what I can do is I can go back to the home screen again. So we've got all the streaming services. So if we go to Netflix, for example, uh, we can sign into Netflix and we've got anything we want to watch there as well. Uh, one of the good features with this system is it's an over-the-air uh, system update as well. So we can check the version and at any time you can download the latest version and it will install it. AutoKit is what we use to connect our CarPlay device. On my iPhone, uh, this is connected via Bluetooth to this. Uh, what it'll do is if we go to AutoKit, it'll switch over and it'll connect to the phone via um, CarPlay. As you can see, now we've switched over to CarPlay and now we're in the usual CarPlay system and it's all happening wirelessly. Earlier on, we mentioned this little coloured ring. If we go into the settings, uh, display settings, it's got LED colour set in there. It's not su anything super exciting, 
But what you can do is you can change it so it, it's it's going between like a, a neon look or a spectrum and it's just going between the colours and you can change the speed of it and things like that. If you can press there, you can turn it off so it's it's not on at all or turn it on and just leave it so it's, it's slowly cycling through all the colours. Uh, not anything super exciting, they make a bit of a fuss about it on the box but um, it's something and it's there. Also in the settings, uh, we've got the floating button that uh, we mentioned earlier. You can turn that off, so it does. if it does get annoying, you can just hold it and move it around in the screen wherever you want it to be. Uh, but if it does get annoying and you find you don't need it, I quite like it there because the main thing, you can close all the applications from it and clear a bit of memory. Uh, back in the settings, you've obviously got your Bluetooth. Uh, more takes you to the Android settings. Uh, so if you look there, you've got the usual Android settings. I do find the system actually really responsive. Everything works at a speed like I'd expect it to. Everything reacts just like I'd expect it to as well. Um, it's quite a punchy little system. And obviously for me, this active tile here, this is what makes it for me. Uh, normally, you you literally you just get this sort of thing on the Android devices, and you can start the applications up and things like that. But I do like having this active panel when you're driving, and that's about it for the main features. There's obviously lots of little things this thing does as well. Uh, we just wanted to go through the main features of it, and like I said, I have been using this for the last two weeks, and until something better comes along, I will continue to use this. Carlink Kit have given me a discount code that I can use, I'll put that down below, and I'll put links to where you can get one of these for yourself, uh, so check out the description for that. But like I said, this has added all the functionality that I need and I will continue to use it for now. Uh, we've got some more stereo systems to look at. So we've got to look at one on the camper next. Uh, I need to change that one a little bit. Obviously, we've not got the crappy Fiesta anymore. So doing the on-dash type of uh, stereo systems, I need a different car because I can't test it in this one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the one in the camper for one with a smaller screen. And then that'll give us the dash space above that we can test the screens above the dashboard. And along with the car stereo systems, we've got some other stuff to test. We've got a load of work to do on the camper van. I want to change some of the things inside because it started to look a little bit tired lately. And obviously it's going to get nicer weather soon. We're going to start going out in the camper. So I'll throw in the odd video of us out in the camper in between all this lot as well. So uh, like the video if you liked it. Obviously subscribe if you want to see more like this. Comment below on any videos you want to see. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.